I said good promo. We talk all the time about Hall and Nash and Hogan changing the business in that one moment. Um, we saw one hell of a moment here tonight. What kind of tangible effect do you believe that that will have on the industry going forward? <sighs> Gosh. Um, obviously, I think it's going to be very impactful. I'm, I'm not personally in the business of a war or competing. I know who competition is and who competition isn't. To me, we focus on ourselves, we focus on the talent we have, and we focus on the people in the building, and I think that's how we grow. It's not about throwing stones, and I know TNT loves ratings, and I know everybody's gonna look at stuff and compare the two. For a company that's only been around for two years, I think they're doing great. And if you're competing with somebody on another night that's got a 30-year head start, well, that's fine. But to me, our competition is our audience. And as long as we keep them engaged and keep them happy, and I think that to bring it back around, that's what we're doing. So I'm not Hogan, I'm not Savage. You know, Daniel Bryan and, Mike, and, and, and Adam Cole, they're not the outsiders. I see the parallels, this is totally different. And I'll go ahead and say it and people can quote me and they'll be pissed off about it. To me, this is bigger. How would you rate your performance tonight? Or is it really too early? You need to really look back at the match and you're like, ah. I, how, would, how would you rate my performance? <laughs> out of a 10 scale. Out of 20? Come on. I, in all honesty, I would say an 8, just because it seemed like you're halfway through the match. No, I'm, I'm being honest, because it seemed like in a little bit there, you got a little, you could tell you were winded. You had been in the ring in seven years. That's, for being brutally honest. Did it look, really, did it look like I haven't, though. did it look like I haven't wrestled in seven years? Cardio, beyond the cardio, no. You look great. Wow. <laughs> I said you look great. <laughs> Wow, dude. Right? Yes. And um, you are obviously thrilled every time you come out to the ring. You've got the crowd around you. You're surfing into the crowd. And there's just a lot of joy around. And that extends both from the audience to kids and adults and us and, and people watching to you. When you're in the locker room, who are you the most happy to speak with, to work with, to share your knowledge with, or to learn something new from? right now in AEW? Uh, everybody, you know? I mean, Sting came up to me today and, you know, I, I don't think these guys are lying, but Sting was just like, you know, it reminded me, your match with Darby reminded me of what Flair did for me. You know, when I, when I went 45 minutes with him, was it in Greensboro? Greensboro? Yeah, I mean, that's a quote from him. And like, I don't think the dude's gonna lie to me. and that means something to a kid like me, you know? Um, Sting and I put together our, our segment from Dynamite the other day, and it was just refreshing to have him be like, well, no, what do you think? And I was like, no, what do you think? And we went, you know, we did the respectful thing, and then we came together, and, and I thought, grew our ideas together and made a pretty good segment. And I, I, so I'm learning from Sting, which is wild. And there's familiar faces, there's Arn, there's Dean, there's guys like that that I will always default to. Guys, what do you think? Jim Ross, what do you think, you know? Um, but I do see younger guys defaulting to me. And, you know, I, 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 I do think that is a, you know, a lot of people will tell you that, oh, I love the business, but you know, you got to give back to the business and this and this. I just think it happens organically. If somebody, I'm, I'm here to help somebody if they want the help, um, but I'm also still learning. There was a point where I was like, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not learning anything. This isn't any fun. And that's when you know you got to get out. And now I'm, I'm, I'm back and I'm around creative people that are happy to come to work. And it's, it's, it's a fun, great learning environment. Uh, Tony, can you, Tony, can you believe that you did this? Because you're you're every one of us, right? Only you had money to do. I'm not a so I'm not a, I'm not a I'm not a White Sox fan. That's right. Hey, it's your boy again here, CM Punk, my boy. Uh, Tony, I can't. Can you believe you pulled this off? Like you changed the industry. I didn't. It wasn't. It was everyone. I mean, it's everyone, but great people, but, and but, especially but, the fans. I mean, it wouldn't true. have been possible without all of you, all the great wrestling fans that everyone made it possible. But no one. When you look around, you're from this area. When you look around at what this is, I mean. Do you ever just like smell the roses? You're, no one else could have done what you did. 
I, they, I don't know if that's true. Fan who had the means to do this. Nobody else. Nobody else could have signed CM Punk. <laughs> that, that, so that is that is that legit. Is, and I guess it is. That, that is legit. It's official. Thank you very much. Thank, right. thank you, Mr. Well, Punk. Tony, how are you feeling right now? I've never felt better in my entire life. This is the greatest feeling of my entire life. I've never felt better. I, I can't believe we pulled it off, and this has been a long time. Like Mr. Punk said, it's been almost two years in the making. So it's uh, it's pretty special, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Tony, the word we're all hearing on social media this, uh, tonight is perfection. And I want to know what you think now that you feel, do you feel like you've climbed Mount Everest tonight? Because this was a, uh, an amazing, an amazing show in front of a hot crowd that could not have been happier walking out. Is there a letdown for a creative guy like yourself after no. a night like this? It always feels like, I mean, if you plan something and it comes off exactly like you wanted it to come off, which is great, and it, it's great, then that's the best feeling in the world. I've worked in sports a long time and I've had some great moments in sports. And I, you know, playoff wins, play, winning, beating the Steelers in Pittsburgh in the playoffs. And, and you know, this, this is one of the best feelings that I, in the world. I can't compare it to anything and it came off perfectly. It is whatever the opposite of a letdown is, this is the opposite of a letdown. Thank you. Last, last, Tony, can you buy the bears? Sorry, last, last question. Can, 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 can I ask the last question? question? Well, last question, I would use it for, don't ask me, ask, ask, use it for punk because. Okay. Tony, can okay. I ask the last question really quickly? Yeah, but ask him because I'm staying. Okay. She already asked me a question. Oh, then it's somebody else, then ask two, it. Two I'm more, sorry. two more Give questions. Punk, two more Dave, questions. Okay. Two, two real quick questions. Okay, number one, yep. is that what was the day or di frame where it flipped the switch where you decided, I'm gonna come? I, I don't know. I, I would have to. There, there for sure was a day, but I, I, I'd have to think back on that. You know, like, you know, I mean, they were in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, I've already said it that um, the the locker room and the situation with Brody Lee's uh, passing, I think, made me really go, oh, that's. I mean, that's different. You know, just people being respectful and tight lipped about a personal situation where there's kids and a, and a, you know, a wife involved. Like I was just, I was floored. I was friends with Brody. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's just like, that means a lot. And it goes far with a guy like me who came up in this business and you always hear things like, oh, the boys, their family, it's your family, it's your family. And it's never, ever been like that. People will use that to their advantage and take advantage of other people and to actually see that, but them not boasting about it to me was special. And then you see that and you're like, oh man, maybe there's something to that. You know, maybe, maybe it's not all the negative stuff that I remember from being in a locker room. Um, I'd have to really think, but that, that was like, that was the big one. Honestly, that was the big one. Cause that, that, you know, I remember just texting Tony and just being like, I'm, I'm amazed that this, this got out, you know, like what a, what a tragic thing. And everybody kept it secret and that, that went a long way with me. And one other thing is, this is a match that like nobody's really thought of, but tonight when you went face to face with Sting, it's like, okay, you grew up, Sting was a big star. Sting's, you know, at, at a certain age, I don't know, but is there something like in a bucket list thing where I'd love to have this on my resume that I once wrestled on a pay-per-view with Sting or I once wrestled in a big match with Sting? Um, it's, it, I've had such, I hate saying the word blessed. I'm not a religious guy. I've had such a, an amazing life where I have found myself in situations where I would just always kind of look around and be like, man, this is wild. And without ever having a bucket list, it'd be hard for me to write things down on the bucket list because I've done so many cool things. But that's, yeah, that's, that's one of them. That's a bucket list thing. It's an item that I never thought I would write, you know, because your, your brain doesn't go there. We were never in the same company at the same time. We're two di different generations of wrestler. And you just, you never thought it was possible. And now it's just like, it is. And that's kind of how I feel about the entire groundswell of AEW as a whole, you know? Like, you got me and Darby and Sting in a ring, and it's legitimately three different generations, you know? And the, the, the knowledge of wealth he brings, yeah, I mean, it's a bucket list item now. I think for sure down the line, we're probably going to tag, you know what I mean? Like that feels like there's something there. And, you know, there's real organic moments here, like him coming out and shaking my hand. We didn't talk about that. That wasn't a planned thing. He came out and he did it. And before I shook his hand, I looked him in the eye and I was like, this, this means something to a kid like me. And he said, it means something to me too, you know? And that's, that's wild to me. And that's, 
that's the the playground we have here where we could do all the the, the stuff that you didn't ever think possible Tony, do thank you, you thank, thank you very much uh, yeah. i'm saying and uh thank okay. you i just uh i would like uh to publicly in front of everyone say one more time thank you on behalf of AEW and all the wrestling fans worldwide to you cm funk thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. am i leaving now yeah. yeah. Looks like I, did that, I think that was it. I mean, uh, we got, we're doing more. Uh, if anybody has any further questions, I don't know if we could take one more. I got one. What? Punk, as someone who loves Chicago as much as you do, you're wearing the stars on your, on your trunks. Yeah. What does it mean to you that Chicago has become one of the hub cities for AEW? Uh, I mean, it, it means everything, you know. Uh, I, I know people groan and say, oh, he, he can't compare him to Michael Jordan. You know what? We sold out the United Center on a rumor. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it, it, for, if I can toot my own horn, I'm a kid from Chicago, and I, you know, I, I, I don't know if I can claim I sold out this building because I think it was sold out before I was ever announced. But I sold out the United Center. I sold out the Rosemont Horizon. Like, that's, man, that's super great, and I would like to brag on that, but it's also super humbling for a kid who, you know, I was at the first show ever at the United Center, the first ever event, SummerSlam 1994. I watched Brett and Owen in the cage, you know, and for Chicago, I mean, it, it, I, I feel like Chicago has just been ripe for the taking. They just, they, they love wrestling and they want to be entertained. And there's been some great shows here. I was on them. I was on a few of them. And then, you know, I, I just feel like we got the pulse of the whole, the whole place. You know, like to me, I mean, what's next? Wrigley Field, Soldier Field. Let's go. Let's go. Man. Let's, go. <laughs> Let's go. And and you guys, uh, thank you all very much. And again, I, I have to say that uh, none of this would have been possible tonight. We were, you know, the company had been doing great. We had a lot of momentum. We were very hot. But the person who made uh, us reaching these new high heights, bringing this new interest and changing our company and changing all of our lives is CM Punk. And thank you very much. No. No, you coming no. here changed all of our lives. No. Everybody in this company, you changed no, it for all no, of us. No, you made it better no. for all of us. Thank I'm you. I'm leaving. Well, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, CM Punk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to introduce the new AEW World Tag Team Champions, Ray Phoenix and Penta El Zero Miedo, the Lucha Brothers. Woo! Thank you, sir. Thank you. My best friend. Thank you. My best friend. My best friend. <laughs> Thank you so much. Best friend. Here you go. Thank you. Good. Guys, in the chair, Mike. Yeah. Uh, love oh. What was the uh, inspiration behind all of the gear you guys were wearing to the ring? Can you talk a little bit about the intro? Yeah. Uh, uh, the inspiration is uh, about our culture. Uh, we are so proud to be Mexican. Uh, to we are uh, so proud to be. Uh, luchadors uh, represent my country represent uh, my lucha libre style and um, <clears throat> that's uh, this is the thing we always want to show uh, uh, show everybody just the the lucha libre culture behind the the mask you know uh, and that's pretty much uh, with the entrance what was the, what is the we did uh, just like what is the lucha libre culture from where it's come and pretty much like because we feel because we are so proud to be Mexicans. Thank you. So Son 15 años que que tenemos nosotros de carrera, como bien lo mencionas, um, vendíamos máscaras afuera de la Arena México, eh, nos dormíamos en un metro cuando nos tocaba ir a una lucha y, y antes no existía ninguna forma de transporte y mi hermano y yo nos quedábamos a dormir en el metro, afuera del metro para esperar eh, que amaneciera y poder tomar transporte a nuestra casa y todo ese proceso ha sido lo que nos nutre hoy 
para poder ser lo que somos, para demostrar y disfrutar y saborear el éxito que hoy los luchadores tienen, pero sin olvidar de dónde venimos. No olvidamos quiénes somos, no olvidamos la gente que nos apoyó y no olvidamos nuestras raíces, mucho menos nuestra cultura. Hoy somos agradecidos con todas las personas que en algún momento nos ayudaron y estos campeonatos también los compartimos con ellos. You guys, you guys defeated one of the top tag teams in the business right now. How is tonight's victory going to give you kind of like that extra step in your new title reign? ¿Cómo se siente en derrotar a uno de los equipos más grandes en el mundo? ¿Y cómo te va a dar ánimo para defender los campeonatos? A very important point it's uh, the John Box. It's one of the best rivals uh, we had. Uh, I think uh, versus. Phase two, uh, John Box is the best matches the Lucha Brothers we have. Uh, we feel so. Sorry, a lot of feelings. It's like, it's it's incredible. It's incredible. I don't have words. It's incredible. Like, it's amazing. You guys uh, talked about um, your heritage and your country being important to you. I, I saw you guys both do the sign of the cross and stuff like that. Talk about uh, your faith a little bit and how much that means to you, like going into wrestling and matches and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Nosotros siempre antes de un show es es muy importante. Eh, encomendarnos a Dios, siempre creemos en un ser supremo, ponle el nombre que tú quieras, simplemente nosotros sabemos cuál es el nuestro y es muy importante para nosotros ya que en cada uno de los shows nosotros arriesgamos la vida. So Penta says that uh, they're very connected to their faith, um, it's very important for them to do that every time, they're obviously very sp spiritual people and it's, uh, it's part of their culture as well. Cool, thank you. Congratulations on becoming Thank tag you. team champions, especially two years after you had one of the best ladder matches of all time with the Young Bucks. Yes. Now one of the best cage matches of all time. Thank you. <laughs> also with the Young Bucks. Yes. Um, how do you see your tag team title run? Who are you hoping to face? And how do you hope to uh, have a different run as tag team champions than your predecessors? We want to face hold the tag teams in the world. We are ready. We prepare our. Uh, I prepare ourselves uh, every day to be better. Every match we we did, every night we try to be better than la the last one, because this is the, the lucha libre pro wrestling is the thing change our life. Uh, this is the thing we love it so much, and we don't care. Put a hundred percent one night and then the next one. Because it's the thing make me feel human. I have a lot of feelings when I be in the ring. And uh, and every night, every every day, we prepare ourselves for for the best. Because we want to be the, the best. We are the best. So we are ready for any tag team in the world. Muchachos, felicidades nuevamente. Gracias. Con esta, con esta Forbidden Door, abierta, todas las empresas eh, trabajando por un mismo fin. ¿Será que podremos ver a Penta y a Phoenix enfrentarse y defender esos campeonatos, maybe con los NWA champ Tag Team Champions? What do you say, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> or, so or with the tag, tag Team Champions, I'm sorry. What do you say? <laughs> with the Forbidden Door open, is it a possibility that we could see the Lucha Brothers take on perhaps the NWA Tag well, Team Well, that would champions. be up to me. So, uh, that's yeah. Tony <laughs> yeah, Tony. Yeah, this, this is Tony good. says. You're asking, you're asking the wrong guy. <laughs> I'm the for, I am the Forbidden Door. Uh, but, uh, no, the, you know, we'll, I, I, uh, I think there's a lot of really good tag Who are the NWA Tag Champs? La Rebellion. Yes, La Rebellion. Who's that? Bestia. Oh, Bestia is Mexican Bestia. guys. Okay. Oh, those guys. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think we got a lot of really good tag teams here in AEW, so that's good. With you guys doing all those crazy moves in the <laughs> ring, do you ever get nervous or afraid whenever you're about to do them? It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, a good question. That's a good yeah, question, yeah, man. That's a great question. Uh, I don't. 
No, <laughs> I, I focus on my mind, like, and just, I know I risk my life, but I try to enjoy it, the moment. I try to enjoy it, what I, what I'm doing, so. But I want to I wanna say something yeah. about uh, this guy. Por favor, Alex. Sí. Cuando yo me pongo la máscara, yeah. automáticamente soy otra persona. Me salen superpoderes, yeah. uh, no siento dolor, no tengo miedo. Puedo ser el, el, el hombre que resiste más dolor en todo el mundo. Penta says, when he puts on his mask, he becomes somebody completely different. He becomes a superhero. He doesn't feel pain, and he's ready for anybody. Yeah, it's really. Yeah. The power a mask has is incredible. It's just like, we go, go, we go. No pienses que usamos la máscara porque estamos feos. Penta says they're not wearing it because they're ugly, so don't think that. It's a real power. The superpower. That's yeah, right, the superpower. Super El guapo. <laughs> My, my, my best friend. He's my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, yes. the Young Bucks all the time are talked about as one of the greatest Texans of all time, but on social media we see, oh, they're flip guys, they're spot guys. Being in the ring as often as you have with them, just how good are they and where do they stand on the Mount Rushmore tag teams? Wow. Que piensan en los Young Bucks que ustedes piensan que son los mejores que han luchado varias veces con ustedes? Yeah, yeah, dude, for us is Dale y la remato. Yeah, so John Box is it's one of the best tag teams in the world. So we feel so proud we beat the John Box, you know. It's one of the great tag teams in the world. <coughs> and all the things their guys did and the history and uh yeah, we beat the John Box, you know? It's <laughs> like not like a not the John Box. That's why I feel like incredible. E los John Box como ustedes saben, como nosotros sabemos y como todo el mundo sabe, son dos grandes hermanos, que son grandes rivales, que son dos profesionales en toda la extensión de la palabra. A nosotros nos complace haber ganado estos campeonatos a dos personas que disfrutan, aman y lo hacen con tanta pasión la lucha o el wrestling como y, nosotros. Y no solo luchadores, también como personas. Y también como personas, son bueno. grandes seres humanos. Yeah. Yeah. Y por eso festejamos doble, ser campeones y haberle ganado a esas grandes personas. Pero no termina aquí. Nosotros queremos, no sabemos si un año, dos años, no sé. Solamente pasa por mi cabeza en un futuro, si Tony quiere. El final de la rivalidad. Máscaras contra cabelleras. Ok. Maybe. Uh, I don't know how. Yeah. Where. I don't know how. But maybe one day. So, in a nutshell, Penta says that the Young Bucks are not only great athletes, they're amazing human beings. They're brothers just like their brothers, and they bring out the best in each other. And sometime down the road, whether it's a year, maybe two years from now, if Tony's okay with it, they'd love to face the Young Bucks in a hair versus mask match. Hey, guys, one more question, please. Hey, last question. Uh, Suit, you mentioned Guapo. Uh, you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna, you gonna wear the suits again. I was digging the suits. I thought you were gonna ask about Shocker or something. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, Guapo, yeah. No, I was joking. Uh, I'm a lucha joke. Uh, yeah, they love the suits. You guys look very good. I, I, I don't know. You look great. I, I, like, I, I like the suits. Thank you, man. Yeah, it's great. You look dressed up good. Thank, thank you, thank you. Thanks, you guys. We really appreciate thank it. Congratulations. Thank you so much, thank everybody. Thank you so much. My best friend, thank you so much. Well, that was uh, that was really special. And now, ladies and gentlemen uh, of the press, uh, it was really nice to have uh, the new World Tag Team Champions here. And and uh, I think it'd be great to follow that up with the new number one contender to the AEW Women's World Championship, the winner of the Casino Battle Royale, Ruby Soho. Hi. Hi, everybody. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited. Where do I sit? You sit by me. Thank you. Thank you. You have written like this new story of your new career in AEW, but the next chapter is Britt Baker. What does that chapter look like for you? Tonight was definitely about the feat that I had before me, which was quite a few incredibly talented women that I have studied for 
a very long time and been a fan of myself for a very long time. So I knew I was up against a lot to get to this opportunity. Having been through this very, very, very long, almost 11 year journey to get here, to get to this moment, to get to the legitimate pinnacle of my entire wrestling career, which was tonight, and gain the opportunity at the AEW Women's Championship is the most special and significant thing in the world to me. And I don't plan on wasting any time because it's been 11 years. I'm gonna hit the ground running and I'm coming for Britt Baker, whether she likes it or not. Ruby, you talked about, um, uh, well, obviously your name. And then uh, <laughs> the music you came out to, uh, talk how that felt coming out to you know Rancid and everything like that. And Tony, that maybe you can elaborate too on how it is for like just getting the music and all that stuff. I guess. Thank you. Oh, um, so I have been a fan of Rancid for a very, very long time. And coincidentally enough, I don't know if you guys know this, but a lot of punk fans are big wrestling fans. <laughs> um, and Lars and I had became friends over the last um, couple years. And I had kind of come upon uh, a time where I was like, okay, I need to know what I'm gonna be called, where, what my music's gonna be. And he suggested and like bestowed upon me Ruby Soho and the music. And I have never <laughs> been so like, I was on camera and I was like, oh my God, I'm so happy. Like I couldn't even like contain my excitement because it just seems surreal and it was, Hearing it tonight and coming out to it and hearing people chant Ruby Soho, and that's me, was amazing. And it was like all of my loves, punk rock and professional wrestling, like came together tonight in this like beautiful story that just was it's just undescribable. You had a series of vignettes that dropped too, mm -hmm. and music was a big part of those. Mm -hmm and they caught fire a lot. And that, I mean, that familiarized people with your name. Mm -hmm. How did it feel to hear people chanting that before you even came <sighs> out with a name you had never used on TV before? <sighs> and, and those vignettes, please tell us about those. Uh, honestly, like, <sighs> I'm trying not to get emotional. I'm not gonna get emotional. <laughs> but I have never experienced anything like that before. And to have, people have that anticipation for me to come out and to peop for people to want that and for people to get it and, and get excited is something that I think all of us in the wrestling industry thrive for, like that moment of just being accepted and wanted and welcomed at this new incredible company that you work for. Like that's always a scare, right? Like you're working in a new place. Am I gonna be accepted? Am I gonna fit in with it? it? Like it just felt like home immediately from the moment I walked out there and it was just, it was incredible. And the videos that were put out, I was so happy with the reception of them because people, people understood the story and people could, it seemed like people felt the actual journey I went on and the struggle that I went through and now this like almost rebirth that I'm at now. So it was, it was awesome. It was awesome, Tony, it was awesome. <laughs> you you, you uh, were part of that women's revolution thing and uh, it kind of feels like the uh, women's revolution is kind of now expanded beyond, you know, just where you were at. Uh, what do you think is the current state of the women's revolution in pro wrestling right now? I think AEW is a critical part of that. I think the level of importance that is put on the women's division here is, is so apparent. Um, there is, you see different women each week. It's not the same people. You see different women who are from different backgrounds and all thriving and succeeding and intertwining with each other. And you can go on these journeys with these women and these women have a voice. And I think this place is a crucial part in the evolution that is women's wrestling. And I think I'm very, very fortunate to be a part of it. One of the things that people talk about, especially as wrestlers move from another place and then they come here is this 
really open and engaging and exciting creative environment among their peers in the locker room. There's a lot of exchanging ideas, there's a lot of freedom of expression, and there's an open line of communication with Tony Khan to talk about anything and everything all the time. So uh, who have you sort of been most excited to work with so far in the locker room? Um, and what are you looking forward to with your experience um, with expressing your creativity and sort of finding a new freedom in this enriching environment? Honestly, and I, I'm, I can't, I, I, I really wish I could find the words to express the level of welcoming I felt when I walked through these doors today. And I, I, I told Tony this earlier. There's something very special about this place. And I had heard a lot of things. I know a lot of people here. I've worked with a lot of people here that um, I worked with on the Indies. And they all told me the same thing. And I tried so hard not to get too excited because I'm like, it can't be that. It sounds too good to be true. It can't be that great, right? It honestly is. Like, I walked through those doors, and I've never felt more welcome in my life. I had so many people hugging me. We're so happy you're here. Like, what a beautiful feeling to be excited when you come to work and, and feel like you're welcome. And I, I just, I, I was just elated. It was, it, it was just such a beautiful thing. And, and to speak to Tony and be like, so like I, I'm, I, I was almost like searching for like, oh, what, what, what are you looking for? Like, what do you, what do you want? And he's just like, I just want you to be you. I don't think I've ever had that in a long time. And it felt incredible to just be like, wow, like this freedom, this creative freedom where the possibilities are endless. And to answer your question, I am a fan of so many of the girls on this roster. Um, I, I, I don't even know if I could pick Nyla Rose, Thunder Rosa, like Tainara Khan. I, I, I just, I can't even pick one because for different reasons, I'm a fan of all of them and I'm so excited to get in the ring with all of them because I think they're gonna bring out a different version of me and a and different side of me and a different fight to me that no one in the industry has seen yet. When was the last time you were this happy in pro wrestling? I don't think I've ever been this happy in pro wrestling, if I'm being honest. Like tonight, I, I, my face hurts from smiling so much. That's a real thing. My face hurts from smiling so much. And I just, I, I never want this feeling to go away. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to Tony. I'm so grateful to, to all of you, to everybody that was in attendance tonight for just welcoming me with open arms. Because to be honest, I'm usually the misfit, but you guys made me feel like I fit right in. Everybody brings something different to the table. What do you hope to bring to the AEW women's division? Oh, that's a very good question. I, I mean, obviously, selfishly, I just, I, 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 I want these girls to take me to a level I haven't been on in a long time, and I want to see if I can still do it. So that's, that's obviously the selfish part to me, but I, I want to be able to in any way that I can elevate this division and and just and just have fun and show everyone the different parts of me, the different parts of all the characters, all the all the people, all the women that you've know, come to know and love or hate, and see different sides of them. And and I hope to bring those sides out of of people you haven't seen. And it's just I'm I'm just excited to be able to be a part of all these stories. And I'm just, I'm just, I can't explain to you guys. I'm so happy. <laughs> like this place rules. <laughs> we get, let's get a couple more. She's doing great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any professional goals and personal goals that maybe before you couldn't achieve that that now in AEW you think you will achieve? So, since I have been on national television, I have never held a title. Ever. And I think tonight I have solidified my opportunity to potentially be the AEW Women's Champion, which to me is the biggest honor that I could possibly have. And so that's, of course, a goal is to be able to hold gold for the first time on national television. Like that's an, an, an amazing goal. And I, and I, it's not one I take lightly, but I think I just, I want to find my love for wrestling again, and I think I found it tonight.
from a psychological We'll get a couple more. Hey, we'll get AJ and then Dave. Okay. Sorry, AJ. Okay. Sorry, Dave. Um, okay. you, you had a great Sorry. match tonight. Thank you so much. And also, you won a title shot at Britt Baker. Yes. What are you going to do to prepare for that match? That is an amazing question. So I have known Britt Baker for a very long time prior to um, prior to AEW, back on the independence when she first broke in, I have known Britt Baker. But I also have been studying her for many years and just keeping up with her career. And she is, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the hardest working women in this industry, both in and out of the ring. So she will definitely be a very difficult opponent to come across, but I definitely think I have an advantage in being the new girl in town. And I think I have the advantage of having this newfound love for wrestling, this newfound fire that has been lit. That's, that's what I'm gonna take into it and just use all of the excitement and feelings I felt tonight, and I'm gonna take it in to my match with her. Dave? Dave? So, um, from, from a psychological standpoint, the last several months of your life you've gone from, was it a low at, at leaving WWE, or was it, um, or did you immediately know where you were going, or, you know, like, when did it, did it kind of like go through your mentality of, le of being, of leaving there and coming here? Did you have to go from a low point to a high point, basically? Of, uh, like, I think honestly the, the videos, if you've seen the videos, you can kind of see my actual journey of, it, it's a lot of like metaphors and stuff, but I, of course I was sad. I had made lifelong friendships there. Like pe women that I, you know, will, will be friends with for the rest of my life. But it became very, very clear shortly after. I was sad, but that, that chapter in my life was closed. And I was okay with that. And I think, the, I, think I was nervous as to what, what the next step was. I knew where I wanted to be from the moment that it happened. I knew where I wanted to be, and it was here. Like, this is where I wanted to be. I didn't know if that was an opportunity for me that I was going to be able to have. I didn't know. There's a lot of people released. I, like, there's a lot of incredible talent here. Like, I'm hoping that there's a place for me here. And thanks to the, the gentleman sitting next to me, like, there's a place for me here. And I don't intend on waiting, wasting that opportunity. If I may, uh, I had heard what a great professional Ruby Soho was. I was a big fan of Ruby Soho's work on television, but you never get to know a person until you actually meet them. Today was the first time we've actually met in person. Yes. Uh, today was the first time we've met in person. We talked, but today was the first time we'd ever gotten together. And it was also today was the first time we ever worked together. I not only had the pleasure of being the CEO and the booker, but today I had the pleasure of being your agent. And what a competent professional and what a prepared, I'm serious. Uh, you never know a person until you work with them. And what a competent, uh, incredibly well prepared, brilliant professional. And I was so impressed. Uh, it was a great start. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Ruby. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. George, I might have to change batteries. We may want to stay. In one second, guys. Thank you, Ruby. Oh, hey, look here, guys. Uh oh. I don't think you'll have a trouble with it. I can sink it. I'll be able to sink it. But if you want to take it, I don't know. Well, the doctor is in the house. And with the doctor in the house, I think it's only fitting uh, with the women's world champion here. Uh, our next guest needs no introduction, so I'll let him introduce himself as you've come so accustomed to hearing, ladies and gentlemen. Adam Cole Bebe. Woo! <laughs> What's up, guys? Uh, Adam, you, like, it was a surprise that you became a free agent, and yeah, I don't think it was a surprise to even the company that, that maybe let you go. Uh, can you please explain that process? Because that had to be a roller coaster that maybe you were expecting, but not so soon. Yeah, so um, funny enough, uh, believe it or not, I was also surprised. Yeah. Um, I was under the impression that it was 
uh, like six months later. Um, so it was a surprise to me, it was a surprise to them. Um, and then all of a sudden I went from thinking, okay, uh, you know, December is when I'm gonna start talking about a new contract. Uh, and then it was like, oh no, we're talking about it in three days. Um, so then I know it was, it was public knowledge to a lot of people that I had um, signed a little extension. I was in the middle of a really serious angle with Kyle O'Reilly, which was very important to me. He's one of my best friends in the entire world. Um, and then after that is, is when stuff kind of opened up for me. So, but yeah, very surprising to me. It was just as surprising to me. What went through your head, decision making? I mean, like you probably were twisted and turned in different directions. You had a lot of different things you probably thought about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, cause when you think about where I was, like that technically was my dream since I was nine years old. Um, and then I'd seen everything that AEW was doing. I, I'd been here countless times to support Brit and, and hang out with the crew. And it's just the best crew. Uh, the, the shows are amazing. The fans are amazing. Uh, but at the same time, I had really built a reputation for myself uh, there as well. But I knew in my heart pretty early on that I wanted to come here. Um, and it was no knock whatsoever on them. I, I had a very excellent four-year experience. But I, I wanted to come back and work with a crew who I love being around 24-7, uh, a crew that is just as passionate about pro wrestling as I am, and fans that feel the exact same way that we do. So um, making the decision was a fairly easy one. Adam, you made a huge statement tonight. What is the message that you're hoping the pro wrestling community receives from tonight? Uh, I hope they realize that I'm just getting started. Uh, like in this sense, I know I've been I've been doing this now for 13 and a half years, but I'm only 32. So, so I have a lot of time left in my wrestling career. Um, as excited as I am, this is a whole new challenge. Like when I look at this roster, I see so many guys that I've never wrestled before. I see a whole crew of fans who are ready and excited for these awesome matches. Um, I'm ready to show them that I'm, I'm gonna deliver. In every sense of the word, I'm gonna deliver. And more importantly, I am so excited to do so. So it was reported before you left WWE you'd had a talk with Vince McMahon. Uh, how did that go, and how different is it talking to Vince as it is talking to Tony? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the talk went great. Um, uh, we had a really, really good conversation um, about a lot of different things, but, but the actual conversation itself uh, was awesome. I, I had no bad experience with him whatsoever. Um, he, he is an intimidating man uh, that definitely commands respect in a lot of ways, um, but, but the experience itself w was totally fine. Um, uh, working and being around, or even, I mean, because I just started tonight, but, <laughs> but being around uh, Tony is so cool for so many different reasons, but the, the biggest one is how contagious his love for wrestling is. Like, I, I, know, I know that I love pro wrestling, but you can't help but be more excited and more ready to go and more fired up when you're around Tony. I, I feel like I can go and, and talk to Tony about anything, which, which is such a... At any time of the night from now on, any time, day yeah. or shine, you yeah. give me any time. <laughs> which, is, which is so cool. So, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and I'm not just saying this because he's sitting here. I say this to everybody, but, but Tony is an amazing, amazing person. Tony, Adam, a uh, question. Was the plan always for you to get here and be on the show right away, or was this something that... This, this all came together really quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, very quickly. I mean, like, in the time he didn't know he was going to be out of contract, and we had no idea, and I had no idea he was going to be out of contract, and then all of a sudden, he was out of contract very recently, and a lot of things came together, and it was just an amazing time. I mean, so many great things happening for AEW and for our business, but I, I really can't imagine a better time or a better person to come and be here for such an amazing night, and it meant a lot that you did, so thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Adam, to be you talked about being in the business for like 13 years, and obviously you had a journey. 13 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, <okay. laughs> but um, anyways, you talked the, just from the past company and the other promotions you've been with in on the independent scene, uh, something AEW's done is a lot like flex your creative muscles a little bit more. And when it comes to things, um, talk about what you're kind of looking forward to doing that. Not that you were limited or didn't had any confines of certain things, but maybe opening up with uh, some creative aspects a little bit, maybe that you weren't able to do in the past. Yeah, so, so this is really broad, but just having the option of having conversations about different ideas. 
like uh, knowing that um, you know me and Tony or me and Matt and Nick and me and whoever can sit in a room and have a bunch of different ideas and maybe one sticks, maybe one doesn't, but knowing that that line of communication is completely open. Uh, naturally, I think a lot of times with creativity, people are afraid to say something because they don't want to sound stupid or they don't want to look stupid and that doesn't exist here. So again, even if you have three horrible ideas, maybe that'll inspire an excellent idea or, or someone else will come up with a different, different thought. So that is the part I'm really excited about. Adam, I think I overheard you say that your family was texting you and they were so excited. What does this mean to your family? I mean, not just to be with Britt, but to be here in AEW. Because I think you said your mom was texting you. She was real excited. Yeah, my, my mom and my brother. Uh, my mom is the only person that I've uh, responded to so far. Um, and that's not, it's not because um, I'm choosing to not, but because it's just been, been so crazy. Uh, but she lives in Pennsylvania. And my younger brother lives in Pennsylvania. Uh, and they wouldn't miss this for the world. And I, I don't know if I should be saying this, uh, but part of why Brit is so amazing is Brit was the one who made sure that they got here, uh, which is really, I have to give her credit for it. I have to. Uh, she was the one who made sure they got here. Uh, they have, they've been at shows of mine uh, for years now, like literally since I first started. My mom has always been someone who supported this through and through. I remember she always said, she goes, as long as I see that you're passionate and as long as I see that you're progressing, I will always support you. And she loved, like, again, her nine-year-old son being like, mom, I want to be a pro wrestler. She'd go, okay, honey. <laughs> uh, but she, she's been there for so many huge moments. And uh, she texted me and said, I've never seen anything like this before, which is huge. She's been to probably a hundred of my matches. She was so happy, all capital letters. <laughs> um, but it's, it just makes the moment so much better. Like, like all of my favorite moments in this job is when my family gets to be here as well because they're such a huge, huge support system. So it was amazing, so amazing that they got to be here. Adam. Yes. Um, you have, you just came here and you chose to side with the elite. What people are you gonna face next? Ooh, I don't know. So there's a bunch of different options, but there are, are definitely some people I'm looking forward to stepping into the ring with. Number one is the gentleman that I kicked tonight, and that's Jungle Boy. Um, he is a incredibly talented young man with a huge future, and a guy I would love to kick in the face again. Um, but, oh my gosh, when you think of that, Darby Allen, MJF, CM Punk, um, Got Christian Cage, so, so many different options, so many different choices. Uh, really, I, I can't think of anyone on this roster who I wouldn't look forward to facing, except for the elite, because we're friends. What do you make of that, that sequence from the time you got there to the end when, when Danielson and Cage are walking out? Where would you rate that among your bigger moments? Do you think? I think it's my favorite uh, moment of all time. Seriously. That's what he said when he came back. He yeah. said that he didn't, that nobody, you guys weren't here. That's what he said. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and, I, and I've had a lot of different, uh, really cool, special, I'm so thankful for moments. But this one was just so special on so many different levels. Like the, um, the, the idea, and I really do this every time, but anytime I'm, I'm a surprise anywhere, I always tell myself, I'm like, God, I hope they're excited. Like, I hope they're, I hope they're happy. Uh, that I'm here. So uh, again, AEW is a, is a company that I've watched from the very beginning. I've got to see it up close and personal lots of times with Brit. Um, and I can honestly say, I t I, again, this is something else I shouldn't be saying, but I was so excited that when I was walking, my legs were shaking. And again, I've, I've been doing this for, for a long time and it wasn't nerves. It, I was so excited that my body was just, it couldn't help but move as I was trying to walk as cool as possible. But yeah, um, man, it, it, it's, it's one of the highlights of my life, for sure. I'll never forget this. Backing off saying that you've been paying attention to AW the entire time. Uh, you're the first major name from NXT to really make this jump here. What, you don't think 2.0 were major names? Oh, well, thank you, you put that with thing. Daniel Garcia, it's the greatest thing in the world. But, um, <laughs> but uh, so in hindsight, having been on the other side of that Wednesday night affair there, uh, what did you learn during that process, seeing the company from afar, and how did that have any influence on your decision? Yeah, well, so it was, 
it was always exciting to watch AEW because you always felt like you didn't know what was going to happen, uh, which tonight was the epitome of that. But like, I, I loved that feeling and that sense of at any moment, something that you did not see coming, something insane could happen on this show week to week. You just didn't know. Um, for me personally, as far as the, um, the, the Wednesday night back and forth, I've always been someone who just kind of focused myself on what I was doing. Um, so, but at the same time, and what I mean by that was uh, not looking at it as um, how can uh, we be better than AEW. It was more how can I make uh, my segment or the, my promo or my match as good as humanly possible and then let's see what happens. But as far as watching the show from afar, between the in-ring wrestling, between the promo work, between the storytelling, and again, between the chaotic what is going to happen, that's what was so appealing to me. Yourself in any other talent here in AEW, like you, you reflect to yourself. Do I see anyone else joining AEW? No, no. Do you see yourself, you know, watching another of the talents on Who's AEW? Down? Oh, oh, who am I looking for? It's a, in AEW yeah. here? Yeah. Oh, okay, you okay. Yourself, you know, a long way ago. Yeah, yeah. So um, again, Jungle Boy is a guy that I think of. Um, I've so enjoyed MJF and his growth and his development. Um, he's always been an excellent interview, and then to see him mold himself into an even better in-ring performer has been incredible. Um, and again, um, Darby Allen is a guy I've really been watching because uh, before uh, Darby Allen came to AEW, I had the chance to wrestle Darby one time. Um, and now to see his development and his growth has been awesome to watch. So he, he's another one that I definitely have my eyes on. Last question, please. Last question. Um, I think we have one more. Yes, yeah, that's yeah, it. We'll, uh, we'll ask uh, one more question, I think, if anybody has one more good one. Adam, can you uh, walk us through your mindset when you knew that the plan was going to be rejoining the Elite on this show? Yeah. Um, God, again, most of it was just pure excitement. Like the, like, the older I've gotten, I've been better about enjoying the things that happen instead of, you know, before I was so focused on every single step and you know, how I was going to get into the ring. And you still do those things, but it's more subconscious now. I, I knew tonight was going to be so special for so many different reasons that I told myself, I'm like, you have to just enjoy, enjoy it. You have to just enjoy it. I mean, of course, I was still shaking and so excited uh, out there, but I did. Um, all I was worried about, all I was focused on was making sure that I never forget this night and I never will. Is it one more? What is it? What is it? One more. Uh, Tony, thank you for everything. Sure. Uh, Adam, I'm personally, for me to you, I'm most, most excited about you being here, number Thanks, one. Thanks, man. Thank uh, you. And all the work that you've done. Thank number you. two, how does it feel to go home knowing that you're still able to play video games and that's not an issue here anymore? <laughs> <laughs> it does. It feels... how, how important is that to you? I would love to know. Yeah, it, it's incredibly important to me. Um, Twitch was something that I started kind of over the pandemic. It was something I had wanted to do for a long time but I didn't really take the time to teach myself. And then when that happened and I had a bunch of time on my hands, I was like, okay, it's uh, no choice now. There's no excuse, I, I have to do it. Um, and initially I, I literally did do it just because I really like video games. I think anyone who knows me knows that I'm, I'm really passionate about that. But then what started from the Twitch stream was this community of people that would all come together and literally share that passion over video games. But I have gotten so many messages of people who are going through a really, really rough time. And the only thing that they looked forward to at that time were those streams. I've built a connection with a lot of these people. I know a lot of them by name. It, social media can be a really nasty place sometimes. And there is none of that that exists uh, in the Twitch stream. So I, I adore doing that. I'm so happy that I'm still doing it. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. So, of course. I would like to, uh, uh, to, as he exits, I'd just like to say a statement, which is that, uh, you know, the Wednesday Night War is over. And we went, uh, in the demo, I believe out of 75 episodes, we went 74 and one in the demo. He is the one in 74 and one. When there was a Wednesday Night War, this is the man who used to strike fear into my heart every Wednesday. Fear strike, I used to be scared. This guy scared the shit out of me every Wednesday, and there's nobody I'd rather have here, and it means the world that you came. Thank you, Austin. Thanks, Dan. Thank you so much.
Thank you. Thanks, everybody. We have one more guest. Uh, can you guys keep these guys apart on the way out, please? Uh, a little skirmish, maybe. Uh, if you guys could please show some decency. Uh, no, there's a Leva, I think. Thanks. He's a professional. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. Don't worry about me. That was very cool. Thank you very much, Adam, for being a professional about that. Thank you, Brian, for being a professional. I can be a little less professional sometimes. Well, you know, with these folks here, I don't think, you know, with Dave and his family and everybody here, we don't want to. <laughs> good, how are you? Good, good. You want to stand or sit? Yeah, I'll sit. Let's see. Oh, okay. Congratulations on such a huge night, you oh. know, like, this is a huge moment in AEW. You know, we saw what happened. Does that put a huge target on your back in AEW? Uh, maybe. You know, I don't, I don't worry about it. I'm actually. Is that a pun? With the... no. Was that like, yeah, okay. No, thank you. No. So, so I don't worry about it. You know, um, it was really interesting to me. Uh, like one of the reasons why I'm here is not to see how good I am. I know I'm good, right? I think, ev and I think everybody knows I'm, I'm pretty good and I'm not cocky about it, right? I've just been around the world. I've been in the ring with the best guys and all that kind of stuff. I want to see how good these guys are. Because you can only see so much by watching them, right? I've watched Kenny Omega, and I think, man, like the last time I wrestled him was had to have been 2007 or 2008 or something. It's like, man, he looks like he's gotten good. Is he? Is he as good as he looks? When I see Jungle Boy, when I see Darby Allen, when I see all of these people, and I think, like, they're good. I wonder how good they are. And that, that sort of thing excites me. I'm excited by, by the idea of new and the idea of fresh, and I'm excited by uh, the things that they've built here. At what point did you know you were going to AEW? Was there a particular thing that you saw like on screen and you're like, I gotta be a part of that? No, um, you know, honestly, it was, a, it was an internal battle the whole time um, because uh, in my promo, uh, what I said out there, there, none of that was promo. It was, I loved where I worked before, like I did. And I love the people I work with, you know. Um, but there was, there was never a moment that I was like, now's, oh, now I know. It's just, I kept seeing it and I kept being like, God, like. So one of the things, and I don't know how many of you are married, um, or have kids, but when you when you're married and you have kids, like your your life becomes like a little bit tame. I love it, but it's a little bit tame. I need one part of my life that's a little bit wild, right? That like, oh man, you see that like you see these guys doing these crazy things, and I'm like, oh my god, can I can I do that? You know what? Hell yes, I can. I don't care. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna go out there and and I'm gonna show everybody here that uh, what elite really looks like. Like, this, this is what elite looks like. And I'm not, you know, Punk had come in and said like, oh, I wanna help the young guys and all that kind of stuff. No, man, I'm gonna kick their fucking heads in. Can I say that yeah. word? Yeah, yeah, can I say in this that? room you can. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Daniel, you mentioned in interviews after WrestleMania. Daniel? <laughs> Brian, sorry. Uh, How dare you? Of course I have, no, 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 I'm sorry. You mentioned in interviews after WrestleMania, you felt disconnected walking out of that stage for that main event. Was that connection back tonight? Yeah, for sure. You know, it was interesting because uh, for the, I don't, say, I don't think it was the first time in my career, but uh, for the first time in a really long time, Tony put me in a trailer. I was hiding in a trailer. <laughs> and then so I had to go back to the trailer after, and then, you know, I talked to my wife and everything. And then um, I was sitting there and just kind of meditating after, and you can just feel it. Like so many times we just like bypass cool things. And I kept sitting there and I don't know how many of you meditate or it's woo woo bullshit, I know, but whatever. Uh, but just feeling like the sensation of it, it still resonated, right? And that's, uh, that's one of the very unique things about pro wrestling is that you go out there and you feel like you, like for the most part, most of my career, almost every time, I've gone out there and really felt something. And tonight, like it was, it was a feeling that wouldn't stop. 
until they came and got me out of the trailer. And then, then you disconnect from the meditation, and then you're just like, oh, where am I going? Oh, okay, yeah. so now I'm here. You've uh, mentioned your wife a couple times. Is there any interest from Bree joining you here in AEW possibly or no? Uh, so, I mean, that would be a very difficult, like, it was hard for me to come here, right? Like, because we, I have so many ties within WWE. There, she's happy there. She has so many business connections there. Um, so, I don't know. Okay. AJ. Um, with all the people in the crowd doing the yes chance, how do you feel about that and how will you move on forward? I mean, it was awesome. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know, we're gonna have to talk about like what I can do and what I cannot do. And so, uh, so I don't know if that's, so one of the things that I do try to respect, because like I said, uh, I appreciate the people I worked for before and respecting their intellectual property and that sort of thing. And so um, trying, making sure that I don't contradict any of that. And, um, and I'd really, like the fans doing it is great, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it. Brian, something I appreciate about you. Not that we're saying that is. I don't think that necessarily is their intellectual property. No, 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 but, no, no, but, no, but no, if it no, were, no, 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 no. Yeah, way. yeah, no, no. Something I appreciate about you is the fact that you like, you kind of go against the grain in a lot of ways when it comes to like, you embrace like reading and you embrace like uh, <laughs> environmental, like environmental stuff, um, and you kind of incorporate that and you have incorporated that in your on-air persona and stuff like that. Um, Going forward with AEW and stuff like that, is there something else that we can kind of expect from you that you bring from your life into, into this? A little bit more, maybe, not that it wasn't authentic, but that more authentic for you being here and stuff. Uh, no, I mean, I, I just think, um, and I think this is a credit to Tony, I think there's a, everybody speaks more authentically here because you're allowed to be yourself more. And, um, and that's not a knock on the place that I worked before, but, uh, but I, I think you see it in people and you see um, everybody has one of the things that I love about this is the artistic expression. And that's something that I've that I've always loved about pro wrestling is that um, you can be what you want to what you want to be or you can be who you are. And uh, I think it pretending to be a different person that's acting. Taking yourself and taking it up a notch, you actually learn a lot about yourself. I've learned so much about myself because of pro wrestling and because of, uh, so when I first started, or when I was in high school actually, I couldn't even read a book report in front of a class. Like, and now, through pro wrestling, I've become, I can sit here and talk with you guys and I'm not really bothered about if I mess up or if I trip over my feet or if, you know, if something happens, you know what I mean? And that's not, and that's because of my experiences in this, from being myself. Like, I, there's not a question anybody here could ask me that would make me nervous. Like, you could ask me about my sex life with my wife, and I'd just be like, well, you know, like, I'm not gonna answer that, but, you know, <laughs> most of you married people with kids know how it is, you know what I mean? So, you know, like, that sort of thing. Yeah. And pro wrestling has made me comfortable with that. Right, CM Punk brought up wrestling at Wrigley Field. Now, because we have an awful football stadium here, Soldier Field, we can never have a WrestleMania here. How about Wrigley Field in the summer, you for CM Punk headlining here booking in Chicago? The Are you booking the buildings now? I didn't know Brian was booking the buildings. Wrigley Field, mm -hmm. Punk, Brian, will it happen? If you'd like to take over booking the buildings, I can step aside. Uh, so, like. so I briefly took part in creative in WWE, and I will say this. I like just wrestling, right? <laughs> like, I, you know, I'll leave, I'll leave the business stuff and, the, and all that kind of stuff up to, up to Tony. I will say this, uh, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, I'm, I'm so fortunate to be accompanied and to have here in AEW working with us, uh, one of not only the greatest wrestlers in the ring, Bell to Bell of all time, but also one of the great minds, and uh, he has so much to offer to us, and even if he doesn't want to mentor people and he wants to kick their asses, I think we're going to all learn a lot from having him here, and uh, he's one of the smartest people I know, so it's really nice to be here with you. Well, thank you. Obviously, you wrestled back and forth with this decision. It was not an easy one. You're not one of the people who was like, I never want to go back there. I mean, you're, you know, you were, you were happy, you know, you were happy there. You were going to probably be happy here. What went through your mind? How did, what, what flipped the switch, so to speak, between the two? And about how far back did you kind of make the call in your head? So, um, 
I had heard something, I don't know, over the past week or something that, uh, that one of the things that, that really turned punk was the Brody Lee show. That was also one of the things that I, uh, I saw it. And um, I mean, so many of us loved him so much, right? And so we saw it, we saw how special it was, and we saw like, okay, we're gonna stop what we're normally doing and do that. And I thought like, that was, that was really special to me. Um, but so that was when I really started kind of thinking about it, knowing that my contract was coming up. But the, but the final decision honestly was, was just like, I started thinking about things and WWE was so gracious with me as far as the offer that they gave me. They were gonna let me go do some other stuff and um, outside, but there's just, <laughs> I hate to say this, there's sometimes, Vin Vince and I have a great relationship and I, and I love him, I do. Sometimes he's overprotective of me and I want to be able to push my limits. That's one of the things that I love about this is like the physicality of what we do out there and being able to push my limits and being able to do that um, here in a safe manner is, is one of the things that really drew me here. And then there's also, I just think, there's an excitement, you know what I mean? There's just an excitement. You see the crowd. I mean, I think you all see it. You probably were all out there and you felt it, you know what I mean? And you felt how excited people are about this product and it feels vibrant and it makes you feel like even just watching it through a TV screen in a trailer and I'm sitting there going, God, this is awesome, right? Like I, I want to be a part of this, right? And so that was, you know, uh, that was it. Although it, w it was, uh, I don't know, I really battled back and forth because um, there's a lot of people there that I consider family that I actually are legitimately my family, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, you know, and, and people that I love there. So, you know, it was a, it was a really tough decision. You came out here tonight um, when you were running down the ramp. You could see your face and you could see every face on the crowd and it, you could have held a mirror up. And it was exactly the same. The joy on your face, the joy on everybody else's face. This is another one of those landscape shifting moments that you are a part of tonight. We've had CM Punk coming out and that changed everything. We have you coming out with Adam Cole. It's changing everything along with Ruby. How does it feel to be in this moment on this show in Chicago with this crowd? And what are you looking forward to doing with AEW? Is there a potential that you might be utilizing the Forbidden Door? Um, so, I don't know, that's a lot of, that's a lot of stuff. Uh, so, remind me of what you just asked again. What's well, basically, in essence, how did it feel coming out in this crowd with this vibrancy and this excitement? Yeah. yeah and I've, then um, the Forbidden Door, you mentioned wanting to sort of test your limits. Is that something that you might be walking through? Yes. But, you know, we all know we're, we're in a weird situation within the world. I mean, I would love, 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 love to go wrestle in New Japan. L would love that. But with COVID being what it is right now, you know what I mean? I can't leave my, I can't quarantine for two weeks. I can't, you know, to go do a couple of shows in Japan. I just can't do it. I would love to wrestle in Mexico. Um, I don't know if that's the safest thing in the world for me right now. You know what I mean? So um, for right now, I'm gonna focus, focus on AEW and then, um, and then go from there. But as far as how it felt, I mean, it felt great, right? Like uh, it was, but I do, I do wanna say this, there, that is only possible because of what the people who started this company have built, right? Like this, the, if um, there's other wrestling companies out there that have great talent besides, besides WWE, like, you know, the um, other companies. And I didn't hear really anybody clamoring for me to go there. There's a reason for people clamoring, me, clamoring for me to come here and it's because of what they've already built before Punk got here, before I got here. People were already excited about it. And then like, oh, imagine if you add this person to this already fantastic mix. Like, that's, that's what gives you chills, right? Brian, any, any wrestling moves that in the past, for some reason, were banned that you may bring now here in AEW? Oh, I'm not gonna tell you that now. <laughs> I've got a I've got a devious mind that is thinking of devious things. 
Brian, we tend to get caught up in the semantics of all this stuff, ratings, key demo, viewership, all that. Tangibly, what do you believe the arrival of yourself, Adam Cole, and CM Punk can do for AEW as a company? Where can it take it? I mean, I, honestly, Tony's the businessman. I could get, care less about the business. You know, like as far as the business end, I want him to make money so that he keeps doing this thing that is so much fun for me to do, right? Uh, the, and so what I want more than anything else out of all this, I don't know if you know this, I'm the richest man who's ever lived. Um, yeah, yeah, pretty much uh, I grew up without much. So in comparison, you know, I feel um, so for as far as that kind of stuff, I just feel so blessed to be able to step into this position where you have a crowd that just loves this product. And you saw it tonight, every match, they're just invested, you know? And so, so for me, it's not about like, oh, can we take it to this or can we take it to that? I would love to help Tony do that. I would love to help Tony do that. But uh, my, my goal is to produce excellent professional wrestling that people can watch, because this is one of the things I think, this is one of the things I truly believe. You show excellent professional wrestling to anybody, and they will enjoy it. Because excellent professional wrestling is fucking awesome. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, thank you guys. And thank you all for coming. I mean, uh, yeah, you. you guys are great covering and all that kind of stuff. I can't thank, uh, I can't thank Brian enough for his time and for doing this. And uh, it's the beginning of a great journey. And I just, uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, thank you, Tony. And I, I, think, uh, I think we all owe Tony a huge debt of gratitude as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 Yeah, no, 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 no. It's, uh, so I will say this, because I have been a part of wrestling since 1999. There was a long period of time. I got fired. I was in a developmental system in, uh, I got hired in 2000, got fired in 2001, shortly after WCW uh, folded. And there wasn't a lot of other places for people to work. And now there's another place that's legitimate competition. And I think that's great. And it wouldn't happen because like, I couldn't do it, right? Punk could do it, couldn't do it on his own. Like, none of us could do it on our own. We needed somebody with a vision, with the right people, to build something like that up. So, like, as much as, you know, tonight, it's like, oh, yay, Brian Danielson, whatever. But I think it's the vision of seeing something like this being possible and then finding the right people and also, like, the people... Gosh, I mean, I you can't credit enough the people who have been here since day one, like the and especially like the younger talent. Look at how much they've stepped up and like, come like, you look at Darby tonight in that ma in that match with Punk. Like, he's the man, right? And who would have thought that? Like, you know, like who would have thought that four years ago? You know, nobody. You know, so four years ago, I w I, I wouldn't have. I honestly wouldn't have. But but you know less than two years ago, two years ago even, yeah, I would have believed it possible. And that's, that's how far he's come and it's how far these people have come because we have all these young wrestlers and it's crazy because when the pandemic started, I don't know if you could say that Darby was like a big wrestling star in that sense of the word, but he was making progress. I don't know if you could say Britt Baker was a big wrestling star in that sense of the word, but she was making progress. For Jungle Boy, for so many, Sammy Guevara, for so many people on this roster that are breaking through and have come so far, like in the pandemic, a lot of people really spread their wings and flew. And so, you know, I. I was not particularly surprised, but like you said four years ago, I absolutely would have been surprised by that. But I, he, uh, he absolutely rose to the occasion. He is, like you said, Brian, he, you know, Darby is the man. Yeah, and even people like Daniel Garcia, right? Like I was really, I, I texted Tony and I said, I loved Daniel Garcia's match with Darby on, on Rampage this last week. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but my wife's um, maiden name is Garcia and he's actually uh, our son. So <laughs> I, uh, she gave birth to him quite a while ago. I uh, thought he was 2.0 son. <laughs> <laughs> they said he was their son. Yeah. There's a lot of so, people claiming him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyways, thank you guys all for, for being here and covering. And also your guys' coverage is one of the things that makes this special too is because you guys spread the word out about how, how great this is and how great this product is. So thank you very much. Thank yeah, yeah. Thank you so much.
Uh, I may take a couple quick ones, uh, and then I would like uh, I'd like everyone to celebrate and go out and have a great night. What uh, what can I do for? And uh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, you have really like you've created this whole like trend of delivering to the AEW fans. So do you feel that? you know, delivering to the fans as far as the product and the talent, do you feel like that's what makes AEW, no pun intended this time, all elite than any other company in the business? I think we have the best roster of wrestlers and we do the best job managing uh, the shows, putting the shows together and it's, we have a great team and I'm really proud of what we do. And no, there's no wrestling company like AEW in the world. I'm very proud of it. Thank you. Um, Thank Tony. you. Um, you've had three surprises tonight. How long and did it take you to... I think I had, did I, well, what, so, uh, did I have four? Four. Do you... Lenore Suzuki. Oh, yeah. Five, you had the butcher. <laughs> well, I brought the butcher back. I wouldn't include, I think that's where we will give it, give AJ a break on that when he's part of the full-time roster. But with Suzuki, I would say we had four. But that's, you, you're right. We had three big ones coming to the full-time AEW roster. So in that sense, you're absolutely right, AJ, with Ruby Soho and Brian Danielson and Adam Cole take you to set up all of it uh well a couple in a sense it was it honestly took a couple of years to plan to get to this point because uh it's definitely the most work i've ever in one night to have for so much stuff to come together and there's nights like this in sports like when you win a playoff game or something really special and you're like you know you think back to all the moments that took place for that to happen and it's a big deal and this feels like that but it's really the amount of planning that went into this i mean honestly it's a it, it goes way back and it's really special um, and to get CM Punk here is something he and I had talked about for a really, really long time. And like he said, maybe you couldn't pinpoint exactly when the tide turned, but it just felt like the longer we talked and the more common ground we shared, the better it went. And then the timing of Brian Danielson's contract expiring, you couldn't make that up. And the timing of that being at the same time and all these things culminated with the return of the fans too. I think we did a really good job navigating the pandemic and putting on good wrestling shows where we set ourselves apart from the competition and made ourselves a really attractive destination where wrestlers would want to sign as a free agent. So I, it took, I would say over 18 months of planning and uh, you know, the first dance was a huge step in it, the signing of Punk and then these other things really fell into place in such a magnificent way with the signing of Ruby Soho, the signing of Brian Danielson, and then really I was shocked that Adam Cole thing came together very surprising too. So it's been a great year and a half in some ways. It's been a really challenging year and a half in other ways, but I think this is the most rewarding culmination of the past year and a half, which really goes back to the beginning of the pandemic. And uh, there's, so there's been a lot of terrible things, but I think this is a, a, a really great night for the wrestling fans and uh, for everybody here. I'm just glad it, it was so special and people had so much fun. Tony, um, you, you've had a very eventful last few weeks. Can you just walk us through the emotions that you felt from Punk debuting to getting Adam Cole and Brian Danielson and Ruby Soho? And all that coming together so fast, if you could just walk us through your emotions through all that. Well, it's been pretty amazing. Uh, it's been a lot of, it's been roller coaster of emotions. I'll, I'll leave the other things out of it because it's pretty amazing all the different things that I, I'm fortunate and blessed to be able to do in my life because, uh, you know, I, I live kind of more than a triple life. I'm working in the NFL and working in English football, and I'm, I'm very proud of the things happening there too, and that's a big part of my life. But really, this uh, has been huge. Uh, really, this is one of the great nights of my life, and I've had some great nights. And this uh, took a lot of planning, and uh, but it, it's been amazing. You know, the, the first dance was one of those uh, indelible memories in wrestling and, and something that we gave everybody that they didn't have to pay for, you know, as long as they had cable or some way to watch TNT, which isn't everyone, but a lot of people. And certainly everybody then was able to go back and watch that moment on YouTube. And most of that stuff is there for the world to watch. And people have seen that clip. It's gone super viral. The, the first dance ESPN, I guess it was the biggest social media post they had since May, which includes the summer Olympics, the NBA finals and the European championships. So it's to say it covered a lot of ground and was a big moment, not just in wrestling, but honestly, uh, one of the biggest moments this year in sports, the first dance helped us set the path to this and really build the foundation for this show. We had such a stack card, uh, you know, it's been coming together for a long time, building to this, all these Young Bucks match with the outside interference. So building to, hey, I'm gonna set no outside interference for this match by putting a steel cage around the ring and, and taking the top four teams and whoever the best team is, they're gonna get a fair shot on the pay-per-view. Well, it came together in what my opinion is one of the great cage matches I've ever seen, one of the great tag matches I've ever seen, and, and just one of the best cards I've seen and really top to bottom. And when you look at Kenny Omega and Christian, uh, you know, 
what, what a great match they delivered. They had such a great match on the debut of Rampage that really uh, helped build this uh, into a, a great match on the card. And then that match, of course, it, it was tremendous bell to bell and laid the groundwork for all these amazing moments at the end of the show too, after the great match. Uh, Dr. Britt Baker had, in my opinion, the best wrestling match she's had, period, not just since she won the title, but her best match. Uh, and Chris Statlander came out and really delivered. She was a great number one contender. She had been undefeated all year, and that was uh, as good a match, I thought, as she's had in AEW or anywhere, too. So I was really, really proud of the card top to bottom to be able to bring in Ruby Soho. Like I said, what an amazing professional, and it was a great pleasure. First time we've actually met in person, let alone work together and working with her and all the women on the match. There were a lot of stories in that match. And I took a lot of pride in it, putting it together, because you know it's like the, it wasn't just like 21 women coming in there. There's a lot going on with Anna Jay coming back and teaming with Ty Conti and the, the alliance of uh, Penelope and the Bunny. And of course, we saw Nyla Rose and Jade team up uh, to take out Thunder Rosa, to take out Julia, knock her out of this battle royal. They were battling with Thunder Rosa all night, and then they even like they like we kind of saw they might they turned on each other. Uh, we saw. Uh, you know, Big Swole and Diamante ahead of the three strikes match they're going to have on Dark go at it. And we saw Jamie Hayter continue the issue uh, with, with Red Velvet that had been boiling over and Rebel came in and got involved in that. And of course, uh, you know, it was great uh, to have so many uh, stars back, uh, international stars, Hikaru Shida and Riho, both former women's world champions and Emi Sakura. And, and yeah, it was just Ruby Soho. What a great debut. So great to work with her and really with all the women in the Battle Royale. I was really proud of that. And just top to bottom, like the whole show was awesome. I, I could talk about everything on the card, but definitely Darby Allen versus CM Punk helped draw uh, such a massive audience for us. And then that massive audience, I really believe, not only did they get our best wrestling matches, everything on the card, Eddie Kingston and Miro, John Moxley and Kojima bringing Suzuki in, everything top to bottom. Uh, it was just so tremendous. And uh, I, I was really proud of the work everyone did. And yeah, it, it, I, it is the greatest run, I think, of anything I've ever been on. And, uh, you know, to, to say things are going well at Fulham and we're sitting at the top of the table and Mitro just signed an extension, like, that's pretty cool. So I love our new manager, Marco Silva. We have, like, a really great relationship. And we finished a transfer window, and I was working 24 hours a day for a while. I was literally running. I had a few days where I was working 20, literally 24 hours. There was no sleep for a few days during the end of the transfer window while I was put, you know, between the end of putting the first dance together, putting these TVs together, setting up for the pay-per-view. Uh, the Jags were in the roster cutdowns, and I was working the English transfer window. So there, I didn't sleep for a few days. And I'm really proud how it all, all of it's come together and now I'm going to uh, Houston for the uh, Jags season opener uh, next weekend after we get done with TV in Cincinnati. I was at our last preseason game in Dallas talking to Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones and Jerry Jr. about AEW, which was pretty cool at halftime of a game that we won. And it was hopefully we'll do some of that in the regular season now, too. So it's been a lot of great stuff. Thank you. Tony, you've had a great uh, success with the top free agents recently. Uh, I saw you with that four horsemen foam hand the other day. Uh, Rick Flair is out there. Have you talked to Rick? Do you see a place for Rick at AEW? Uh, I have talked to Rick because he's one of my really, really close friends. I can't say about AEW, but what I've talked to him mostly about is his son-in-law, Andrade El Idolo, who is a top performer here. And uh, he's one of our big stars. And he's got a huge match coming up on AEW Rampage on Friday night against Pac. And I really believe, uh, you know, Rick is... A, a family first person, he really cares about that and he wants to see Andrade Alidolo do really well here. I'll tell you guys a true story. Um, Rick visited, I don't know, is it, is it word out? Did people hear Rick visited, has been around here? I think people have seen Rick around. Okay, so I had one of the greatest thrills of my life on the la you know, this past week. Uh, I had a good amount of time where Rick was in the chair next to me while I called the shows and it would be like sitting coaching a basketball game and having Michael Jordan sitting in the seat over with you and come over to you later and say your command is like incredible. I'm so proud of you, I had no idea. And all the different things you were doing at once during the show, because I do a lot of different things on the headset during the show, you know, between timing the show and, and announcers and, and cues and stuff and, and just trying to keep things running smooth and, and keeping the guys calm and talking to people and it's a hard job. And to have Ric Flair, tell you you did a great job is like, you know, that's the greatest compliment as a wrestling person I can get. He's the reason I'm doing this. And he's been a great friend to me, like not just in, we've never worked together ever. Uh, but, uh, but I really care about him a lot. And I don't think there would be an AEW without him because I probably wouldn't have done all this. I'm, you know, Tony Flair at AOL.com <laughs> since like 1995, 1995. Uh, so, uh, no, I really, uh, I, I love him so much. And it was just great to have him here. And, uh, you know, it's been a family thing this week. 
can get some player comparisons is like, and Adam Cole mentioned him too, is MJF. Um, having that, uh, like he did the Fargo strut, stuff like that. Uh, he's a, we all know MJF is kind of like knowledgeable and historian a lot in the seams of the business and stuff. Talk about his growth throughout this whole storyline with Jericho and this feud with Jericho and uh, how you see him now in comparison to when he first started it. When he first started in AEW, he was one of our top young stars. And at some point a long time ago, he went from being one of our top young stars to being one of our top stars. And when I, you hear me talk about our top young stars, there's a reason I almost never say his name because he's one of our top stars, period, even though he is one of the youngest wrestlers here. Uh, his experience he's gained, he is a veteran, he is a leader in the locker room, not just uh, bell to bell, not just the matches he puts together, people turn to him for advice like a veteran. The amount of people he's recommended to me, people that went to Creative Pro that, that he trained, he recommended Chris Statlander and Layla Hirsch to me personally. He called me up on the phone and recommended both of them. He recommended, uh, I called him asking about Max Caster and Anthony Bowens, he gave me references, and then I said, do they get along with each other? And he said, I don't know, and I said, well, I have an idea. Uh, and uh, there's and uh, Bear Country, he's a number of people he's given me rough because he's a, got a great mind for it, but then, forget about that, put that in the back burner for a second, let's focus on what you're probably really thinking about, which is himself, his, in, and his, his, his charisma, his promos, his, what he's come, how he's developed as a wrestler even more, and being in there with Chris has helped a ton because Chris is one of the all-time great wrestling minds, and they have so much in common, and at the same point, same age Max was at, think about everything Chris accomplished and how much insight Chris would have for Max. So he, the sky's the limit for MJF, absolutely. It's a great question. I can do a couple more. Yes. Tony, fans everywhere, you know, when they released a, any other talent in, in other company, they always consider AW first, AW first. How do you feel about fans thinking about that and how you deal with that? Uh, well, it's great. I think, you know, we want to be, uh, uh, pun intended for Ruby, destination. Destination uh, for Ruby Soho, or destination for Brian Danielson, or a destination for an Adam Cole, and a great destination for the Forbidden Door for wrestlers from other companies, but for any free agent in the world, uh, you know, I'm, I'm open for business, and I, I'm really interested, and in, we have, I think, the best roster in wrestling today. I really believe it. Dynamite, Rampage, our pay-per-views, we deliver a really quality show, and it's because we have such great wrestling talent, and we have from the beginning, and the roster has never been better or stronger. But I'm always looking and interested in adding people, so it's a great question. Tony, was, we saw a bumper about Full Gear. It went from November 6th to November 13th. And was that, was the switch based on just the Canelo Alvarez fight in the big UFC? No, it was, it was, yeah, it had much to do with Usman and is any. Canelo, yeah, absolutely, Canelo and Usman. I, I really would prefer not to compete head to head with, honestly, not yeah, Canelo for one thing, but also Dana's a really good friend of mine. And I don't really see any point of like taking money off each other's table if we have to. Like, I mean, he's got a big pay per view show that day in mine. I was actually able, you'll, when you find out what we've got set, um, you know, it, it's a, it's a, Logistical, it's a big change, but I think in the end, it, it probably is going to work out better for us. It'll work out for them, and then my friend and I both get to do our shows on back-to-back -back weekends and be very happy, so I think it's good. Just a quick follow-up, is St. Louis still the destination? I can't, uh, I can't get into the destination, but uh, I will say that we'll still be in St. Louis for uh, Friday Night Rampage, which was that night before, and then uh, that's all I can say for now. Hangman Page is a guy who a lot of people were expecting to be like headlining the show, and I'm sure you saw like there was a little bit of disappointment there. There's nobody talking about being disappointed now. How does it feel to kind of erase that? And how much of like the big stuff that happened on this show did you know whenever whatever decision was made to not have Hank? I had a feeling, but I had a lot of backup plans, but I would have given him the time off either way. I mean, even if I didn't have the guys in, I would have found a way to make it work um, and accommodate him because it was, you know, for a imp very important reason. And so, uh, I, you know, he's a big part. He's a big part of AEW. He's one of our really important stars. Um, I didn't have everything exactly, and I really didn't have everything exactly into place, you know, until we got there. And I think you've all heard the story, which is true, that Punk didn't actually sign anything until that night. But we had a handshake, and I trusted him. And same thing with Brian. Like, Brian and I, I think Brian just signed. So I trusted him. You know, we have a good relationship, and we built that. Uh, same with Austin, uh, with Adam Cole, excuse me. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, really with Adam Cole and, and with Brian Danielson and, uh, you know, and of course, uh, with CM Punk, with Ruby Riot, uh, these things all kind of, I'm so, sorry, excuse me, very, I should, sorry, I'll never do that again, excuse me, I'm very sorry. Ruby Soho, that'll be the last time you ever hear me do that. Uh, and uh, so with, with all these great stars, uh, I wasn't sure everything was going to fall into place, but they all just kind of one by one started to look more likely. You know when something's like, uh, it's like, this could happen, and then every day it starts to look a little bit better, a little bit better, and it's like, 
Mr. Punk said, like, I don't know if there's a day I could put my finger on all these things and when they all were going to hit, but it just kept looking a little bit better every day. Um, and definitely every good conversation I had with, with the, each of them felt a little bit better about what we were doing tonight. I can do, uh, one, I'll do AJ, then one more. What's up, AJ? Um, with Friday Night Rampage, we had Dark at that, but now Dark is being filmed in Orlando. What are we going to have after Rampage? Will it just be a one-hour show? Will there be non -tele Well, Rampage is, so Rampage is often uh, taped on Wednesday. Not every week, but when, so basically the cadence I've fallen into is when we do a live Rampage, then we'll do Tape Dark that night. So it's like this past week we did Dynamite and we did Elevation beforehand and, and, and then we did uh, we did Rampage, we live this past week on the Go Home show, and we did Dark then. But as we, if we fall, there's gonna be times where Rampage might be taped on it. We'll do Elevation before on Wednesday, before we go live for Dynamite. Then we'll do Dynamite, and then we'll do Rampage after. So Elevation will be the pre-live matches, and then we'll go live with Dynamite, and then we'll film Rampage. Basically what we did in Milwaukee, when we did the uh, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus versus uh, the Lucha Brothers Eliminator final match where Giannis the Greek Freak was there. That, that was kind of how we handled that. So, and then uh, if there's a live Rampage, I'll tape Dark there. But there's going to be a lot of times where Elevation, Dynamite, and Rampage, that's plenty. So what we're going to do is I've got Universal Studios booked out to sh shoot AEW Dark there. It's the home of WCW Worldwide. I think that would be the show I would compare it to more because it's going to be more about younger developmental matches. It's not going to be our, it's, you know, not really our A show, not... Dynamite and Rampage, which are our two primary shows, I think this is going to be more like how WCW kind of used worldwide uh, tapings to get a look at young wrestlers. And when I look back at those shows, and I, they're some of my favorite shows, you see so much great talent, great veterans like, uh, you know, Bobby Eaton, may he rest in peace. And it was, uh, uh, this show is for him and, and seriously, uh, beautiful Bobby Eaton, one of the great wrestlers. And uh, it was, um, it, it, the amount of people uh, here that knew him and were close to him and talking to people like Arn Anderson, uh, and talking to, you know, Tony Schiavone and Chris Jericho and Chavo Guerrero and people who knew him well from WCW and had great stories. It means a lot. He was one of my favorites. So this pay-per-view is dedicated to him and all the great wrestling fans and all the great wrestlers we've lost. Uh, but, you know, go back to watch Worldwide and you'd see a guy like beautiful Bobby Eaton wrestling and young Chris Jericho. Or you might see two young guys like young Dean Malenko and young Rey Mysterio on Worldwide. So you get to see great matches that weren't necessarily always on a Nitro. Sometimes those guys would be on a Nitro or a Thunder, but they'd get time and chances to work with different people. You know, you might not always see a Bobby Eaton. You might not always see Greg Valentine on uh, Nitro sometimes, but, but it's, it's going to be a different feel. I think I'm really excited about uh, what we're going to do, not to compare it directly to that. It's going to be a different show. It's dark still. But um, it'll be fun shooting it there. And like I said, it's a little bit lower pressure. I wouldn't necessarily utilize Universal Studios every week for Dynamite or Rampage, and ideally, but you never know. I mean, it's a great facility. But um, And honestly, at one point in the pandemic, I did look at it, but Daly's Place being an outdoor venue that was right there for us, I really liked the idea of bringing the fans back in a safe, controlled way. Jaguars and, and Daly's Place uh, right there adjacent to each other, we basically did the same thing, running shows at 25% socially distanced, putting people in pods like a drive-in movie or something, and it was very safe, and neither the Jaguars or AEW had any transmission. So I didn't use Universal Studios, but I, I thought about it, and now I'm really glad we saved it for the dark tapings. So it's another great question from AJ. I got time for one or two. Uh, yes, hey. Oh, okay. My question is, you know, all, we've been talking about this throughout the entire night. We've been talking about, you know, the signings and, you know, people coming to AEW, it being a destination that people want to go to. Ruby herself even mentioned that she didn't know if there was going to be a place for her here. So my question to you is when certain amounts of talents become available, how do you decide, like, what factors do you consider whether or not to bring these people in, especially when social media is going, I hope we see this person in AEW. I hope we see that person you in can't AEW. Bring everyone and the fans, the that's definitely a huge part of it. The fans being interested is a big part of it. And there's sometimes people that I really believe in that maybe the fans aren't necessarily calling for, but you can, you know, not every acquisition is CM Punk. Not every acquisition is Brian Danielson or Ruby Soho or Adam Cole. You know, there are people who are a little bit less heralded. That's why I, was, I wasn't really joking. I mean, 2.0 are great wrestlers and, and they came from someplace else and they were released and they were on the street and they were looking for work. And I was very happy to take them because they're really great wrestlers. And I was like, I have a spot for those guys and I have a great spot for them. And Daniel Garcia was doing great things on Dark and I wanted to put them together and I thought they could come in and I you know, wanted to get a look at them in a trios match on Dynamite against Moxley, Eddie and Darby because I thought it would just be really cool to get Moxley, Eddie, Darby and Sting out there. And you can't use the wingmen in that spot every week. so. <laughs> 
I wanted to get a look at some new guys. And boy, have they done a great job. So uh, it's just I, some of it's feel, how the fans feel. And I had them shoot a promo for that match at, at a dark taping. And uh, I had them shoot a promo for the Dynamite match, and it got like a huge response on social media the night before the trios match. I was like, I think people are going to be into these guys, and they were. So a lot of it's feel, and it's also just the need because there's a lot of great wrestlers. It's not I haven't signed them because we don't like them or I don't like them. There's a lot of people I like that I just haven't been able to sign because there's only three hours of television and uh, there's only so many spots. Uh, but but it's a great question, and it's really just gut feel. And honestly, there's been some that I maybe would have wanted at times that we didn't get, but then they, you know, they, sometimes they, they even come back around. There's been people that I uh, wanted and uh, you know, it worked out in the end and, and they're here. So uh, I, I will say this, from the competition, if I could pick two people, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, if I could have picked two people from the men's roster in our competition, they would absolutely have been Adam Cole and Brian Danielson, absolutely. Uh, is there anybody who, which I, I feel very blessed they're here. Is there anybody uh, who has not gotten to ask any questions all night, who has not asked a question? Yes. Um, obviously, Sky, Sky Blue got a great reaction tonight. Um, is there any plans to bring her in? Yeah, but I keep using Sky Blue. That's what was a very organic moment last night. She did great, and I, that was on the fly. It was audible. Um, so it just felt right and had to go out and do it. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it was she's doing tremendous, and that's why, like I said, I, I was the agent on the Battle Royal, and I, I wanted to put her in a prominent position. I thought she'd do really well, and, you know, she came out, and what she did was she got a great reaction, and she helped the match in the beginning to keep the match hot, and then there was another wave of people coming in, and that match is about, you know, moments and pops and waves and featuring different stars, and she uh, got a great reaction and helped us keep that match hot at the beginning, and then, uh, it, you know, I think she's got a great future, so she, she can do a lot for us, and absolutely, uh, you know, on, on Friday night, the reaction she got, I, it was an easy decision for me to make. Uh, I was uh, the second time that Jorge Masvidal got some airtime in AEW. Any uh, future uh, with, with him and, uh, and you guys? It's more than, he's been here more than two times, but he's only, I think, been on TV a couple times because he's, you know, he's, he's great. I love Georgie. Uh, he comes, hangs out, and he's, I've, I've hung out with him in Miami a bit. We're both really good friends uh, with Dan Lambert. I love Dan Lambert. And I, no bone, off, off camera, I'll make no bones about that. He is one of the most genuine uh, people. He loves wrestling as much as anyone, and that's why he's here. And he's done good work in wrestling before, not on this big of a stage, but uh, he's got a great mind for wrestling, and, and that's the thing. Like, anybody who knows Dan loves Dan, and that's why Georgie comes, because he loves wrestling. He likes having a good time. He li I think he likes me. I like Georgie a lot, and it's fun having him here. So uh, it, it's really... Uh, it was an honor to have uh, George Mazes at all. I mean, you can, uh, uh, Georgie's such a cool guy, man. I, uh, I can't tell you how, what a nice person he is, and he's always been really good to me, like not when we're at shows, but just like around Florida and stuff. Uh, and it was a big deal for him to come here, and who knows? Who know, you know, I just think uh, American Top Team now with Scorpio Sky, who's you know made a long-term commitment now to AEW. We, of course, just signed Ethan Page very recently, and I just extended Scorpio Sky. And uh, I really believe in him, and I really believe in both of them, and I really believe in Dan Lambert and American Top Team, that they can uh, be a big force here. And they're a looming presence tonight. So uh, it was really cool that Georgie uh, and, and Andre and Junior, of course, also came with, with Dan. Uh, all right, I truly, this is the last one. Tony, thank you. Sure. Um, I used the word historic on social media about the, ever since you, you guys did uh, Rampage, the first dance, and now tonight with Brian and Punk Wrestling, how do you feel about the landscape in professional wrestling changing and the majority of the people now, from what I see on social media, wanting pro wrestling, Punk coming in saying pro wrestling, Brian pro wrestling. How does that make you feel? What's the mindset about that? And do you feel that at all? It's my mindset. It's my mindset. Wrestling is my, pro wrestling is my mindset. Tonight, uh, Excalibur said, some, you know, Kenny, when Kenny brained him with the belt, Kenny said he hit him with a championship title. And I said, Excalibur, you can say belt, bro. Uh, and, uh, and so those are not banned words here. Pro wrestling is the least banned word. I use it all the time. I always hear me thank the wrestling fans. That's what we're doing here. Wrestling fans watch the wrestling program, as somebody I look up to says, wrestling fans watch the wrestling program to see the wrestlers wrestle. And even if I don't always follow everything he says or uh, haven't always made him happy, I, that is probably the person I learned the most about the wrestling business from. And I don't think he would probably take a lot of credit for me as, uh, as his protege, but the fact is he's right about that. And, uh, you know, I, historic, I, indelible, they're great words. Um, and I had a really good feeling about tonight. And a lot of times when you have a great feeling about the show on paper, you know, we've done 100 Dynamites. 
We've done four rampages. We've done 10 pay-per-views. We've done a lot of shows. Usually when they feel really good on paper, or unless some bad accident happens or somebody there's a, either in production or God forbid in the ring or something, there's none of that. It was a perfect night and it didn't feel like it just felt on, felt like the card was perfect. The moments were perfect. The, the signings were perfect. The fans were perfect. The night was perfect. The momentum, the environment, it was a perfect night truly. And I'm really glad all of you were here and I hope I got to everyone's questions and that's why I wanted to stay and talk to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you.